Basically, as a self-employed person, you have the option to either buy your car privately or include it in your business assets. And of course, this changes the treatment in accounting. However, you can't completely choose whether to buy the car as a private vehicle or as a company car. This depends on how large the percentage of business use is. This means you first need to calculate the percentage of business use. And for that, you need to keep a logbook for a representative period and record whether your trips are for business or private purposes. Of course, customer visits are clearly business related, but trips between your home and your office, if you don't work from home, are also business trips. Trips such as vacations, weekly shopping, or taking your child to daycare are private trips, and you should separate them. And once you have done this for a representative period, for example, three months, you can calculate a percentage. Then you will know that your business trips, for instance, make up 78%. And depending on the percentage of business use for the car, you must assign the car either to business assets or private assets. Essentially, there are three scenarios. The first scenario is when the percentage of business use of the car is over 50%. Then you don't have a choice. You must assign the car to the business assets. That means it becomes a company vehicle. The second scenario is when the percentage of business use is between 10 and 50%, then you can choose. Then you can decide to assign the car to business assets, which is discretionary business assets. Alternatively, you can choose to assign the car to private assets. If the percentage of business use is under 10%, you use the car mainly for private purposes, you do not have the option to choose. Then you have to buy the car privately and you have no option to acquire it as a company car. Depending on which scenario applies to you or what you decide, this will naturally have consequences for your accounting and tax recording. If you decide or are required to acquire the car as a business asset, then you must book all costs associated with this car through the company, meaning you must record everything as a business expense and also pay for everything from your business account, including the purchase, maintenance, fuel, cleaning costs, etc. All costs will then go through the accounting. However, you must tax the private use, for example, 30%. And you determine this private usage percentage, which is the portion you need to tax, and ultimately the tax amount, either with the logbook or the so-called method. Both of these are complex topics, which is why I have recorded an in-depth video on each. I have linked both of them below in the video description. Be sure to check them out. If you include your car in the business assets, or if you buy the car privately but use it for business trips, you still have two options. The first option is a flat rate method. You can book 30 cents per kilometer driven as a business expense. So for example, if you drive to a client meeting and the client lives 50 kilometers away, meaning you drive 50 kilometers there and 50 kilometers back, you have driven a total of 100 kilometers. Then you simply calculate 100 kilometers times 30 cents per kilometer, which equals 30, and you can book these 30 as a business expense. Alternatively, instead of using the flat rate, you can also calculate the actual cost per mile. Because honestly, most cars are much more expensive than just 30 cents. And if you want to include more costs in your accounting, you can do that too. However, you need to accurately determine how much your car costs per kilometer. For that, you need to document your kilometers precisely meaning you have to keep a logbook and record all expenses related to your car. And then you can calculate how much your car costs per kilometer. And if that's, for example, 57 cents, then you can actually apply this 57 cents per kilometer. In the example I just mentioned, with the 100 kilometers for a client appointment, you could not only set a flat rate of 30, but actually set 57. However, you have the additional effort of precisely documenting all these costs and the mileage. In this context, there are a few points you should particularly consider and at least think through before making a hasty decision. The first one relates to the acquisition costs. Because if you include your car in the business assets, at least if you are subject to regular taxation, you have a VAT deduction. And that can be quite significant when purchasing a car. This means that purchasing the car as a business asset after deducting VAT is significantly cheaper than buying the car privately. Because if you classify the car as private assets, you generally won't have a VAT deduction in your self-employment. The second point you should definitely keep in mind is actually the sale. Yes, you should consider the end right from the beginning. At some point, you might sell your car. 
And this will also be handled differently for tax purposes, depending on whether you bought the car for business or privately. If you buy the car for business purposes, then the sale is naturally also part of your business activities. This means that the profits or potential losses you make from the sale are part of your self-employment. To determine whether you have made a profit or loss with the car, check the acquisition costs. Then check how much you have depreciated this car. If you don't know what depreciation is, check the top right corner where I've explained it in detail. And the acquisition cost minus the accumulated depreciation is the residual book value. If you sell the car for more than the residual book value, you make an accounting profit and you actually have to pay taxes on that. Honestly, this doesn't happen very often because cars lose value relatively quickly. That means if your car is not exceptionally value stable, you will incur a loss in most cases. And then you can also claim the loss in the accounting and save on taxes accordingly. However, if you purchase the car privately, the sale of the car is also private and is always tax-free. You cannot claim any loss for tax purposes. I hope this video helped you decide whether to buy the car for business or personal use. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment under this video. You can find all the information on how we can assist you by clicking here. Otherwise, you can also watch the other videos on this channel, this one or this one.